Okay, I'm going to get us started here. This is Ed Crow with Pinnacle Financial Services, and today we're going to talk about the CMS final rule and the changes that it has created for DSNIP plans for the special election for DSNIPs for 2025. This is going to have a big impact on producers that focus on dual that are, that are writing new business and building their book. Uh, it might have an impact on producers that already have a big book, maybe in a positive way, because it's going to limit the amount of changes that can be made in some scenarios. But either way, we're going to go over the changes today and try to give you a good understanding of what that's going to look like for 2025, which is obviously just right around the corner. Uh, we get a lot of questions about getting sent the recording for these webinars. We do put them all on the YouTube channel. So you can just go to our YouTube channel, um, which is youtube.com forward slash at PFS insurance. So it's youtube.com forward slash at PFS insurance. So go to our channel. We put our, all our webinars up there. Um, definitely would like you to subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. Uh, when you subscribe, you'll get notifications then when we put new content up, which we do on a weekly basis. So having said that, let's get started. Okay, so again, as I mentioned, big changes for from the final rule. It creates big changes for the SEP for full duels. We'll talk about those changes. Uh, it's going to be applicable to full duels, partial duels, and LIS only. Uh, it's going to eliminate some SEPs. It's going to create some new ones. Uh, it's going to create categories for DSNP levels of integration, which we'll talk about. And that actually, to an extent, will be important for you to understand because it will impact uh, what plans you can use that special election for. Okay, so the changes are going to apply, as I mentioned, to full dual partial duels, which is QMBs, and LIS only. Um, so LIS only people who are drug help only, so people who are enrolled in LIS but not Medicaid. So these changes will take effect starting 1-1-2025. So for AEP, when you're writing business, these changes will be applicable. So the first big change is the quarterly SEP for full duels, partial duels, and LIS only is eliminated. It is gone. So there no longer will be a quarterly, quarterly election to make changes for those people as there is today. So starting when you're writing 1-1 one, one effective business, um, that will no longer be there. There is a new monthly SEP. That's again on a monthly basis, not quarterly. So there's a new SEP that is monthly that will allow all levels of help, whether it's full, dual, partial, or drug help only. It'll allow, allow all levels of help to disenroll from an MAPD, whether it's a regular MAPD, a dual, a dual lookalike, doesn't matter. They can disenroll from it. They can go back to original Medicare and enroll in a standalone drug plan only. That is the only option of that SEP. Disenrollment from the Advantage, Original Medicare, and Drug Plan. There's also a new monthly SEP that's been added on a monthly basis, again, for all levels, and they can change their drug plan during the year on a monthly basis. Change from one standalone drug plan to another. Again, it, it's limited to that. That is all they can do. And then finally, there's a third new monthly SEP, and that is for full, full dual duels only, and that is for a full dual to change from one Advantage plan into a DSNP plan, but that DSNP has to be integrated and aligned for them to move into it. So that will lead to the big question, what DSNPs out there are integrated and aligned? And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so let's just do a, a review here. So you've got, if somebody's LIS only, they cannot change from one Advantage plan to another on a quarterly basis because it's gone. Same thing with partial duels. Same thing with full duels. There is no quarterly anymore. There is that new election, though, for full duels where they can move from one Advantage plan to another as long as they're moving into a DSNP that has a level, one of the three levels of integration. And we're going to talk about those three levels. So we're calling it the integration SEP. I, I see other people are calling it that as well. I'm not sure if that name is going to hold or that's officially what it's called. But for the integration SEP, a full dual can move into a plan that is one of these three levels of integration. So fully integrated, duly eligible special needs plan, FIDE SNP, a highly integrated dual eligible special needs plan, a HIDE SNP, or a DSNP that is applicable integrated only. So a applicable integrated plan, AIP. 
the dual plan has to be one of those designations for a full dual to be moved into one of those plans. Uh, and if it isn't one of those three, then the full dual cannot use that monthly election to move into a, a, a different dual plan. So if the dual plan doesn't meet those criteria, you're not gonna move the people. The SCP is not available to enroll in for coordination only DSNPs. So that, that's the thing we'll talk about is there's a lot of DSNPs out there that are duals, but they're coordination only, or you'll hear companies call them integration only. They obviously can't use the SCP to enroll in the, into a standard MAPD, and they can't use the SCP to enroll into a uh, DSNP lookalike plan. We'll get into de details of the lookalike if you're not familiar with it. What if, now obviously there's three new SCPs and a full dual can use any of the three. So what if they use two of them at once? Like what if they use the, the SCP to switch their, uh, a dual plan, they use the SCP to move out of that dual into original Medicare and a drug plan, but then they want to use the integration in the same month, the integration SEP to move to an integrated plan that meets one of these criteria. Well, the last one they choose is the one that'll win. Okay, so obviously to use the integration SEP, it's going to be important to determine the level of DSNP integration. The carriers are going to have to do that for us. There's really no way for us to look and see if a plan meets that criteria or not. So we're going to need guidance from the carriers to determine is their plan, their, are their DSNP plans eligible? We talked, I mentioned a dual lookalike plan earlier. What is a dual lookalike? Just for those who aren't familiar, a dual lookalike plan is a regular advantage plan that looks like a dual plan. So it has dual like benefits. It's a regular advantage plan. It's not a, a DSNP and it has a high percentage of duals enrolled in it. Now there's criteria plans need to meet in order to be considered a DSNP, a lookalike plan does not meet them. So a lookalike plan has no contractual responsibility to coordinate care between the DSNP and Medicaid. Um, they also oftentimes do not have a model of care. So if CMS identifies an MAPD plan as a lookalike, they're not gonna renew that plan the following year. What do they use for criteria to determine if it's a lookalike? Well, if it's a MAPD that doesn't meet the criteria uh, to be a SNP, and it has 80% or more duals enrolled in it in 2024, this year, then that plan will not be renewed. That percentage goes down to 70% in 2025 and 60% in 2026. So in 2026, if you've got a plan, it's got 60% more or more duals in it, it is not technically a DSNP. They're gonna deem it a lookalike and it will not be renewed. So what's aligned enrollment and do we need to care? Well. We do, unfortunately, um, and in 2027, we're gonna need to care more than we do now, but we really need to care about it now as well. <clears throat> so aligned enrollment is basically when you have a, a Medicaid managed care organization, an MCO, or sometimes the acronym MMCO is used. I see both used. I'm gonna go with MCO because it's shorter. When an MCO has a relationship with a DSNP through a parent company that offers a DSNP plan, they are considered affiliated just to give you a quick example of that. So you've got a company, MCOs are basically insurance companies that manage Medicaid. And they do it at, at a capitation rate and they do it in a number of states. Now let's say a company is, has a managed, an MCO, managed Medicaid plan, and then they have a parent company that offers a DSNP. That relationship then allows them to be considered affiliated because companies are the same or it's, you know, there's, all, joint ownership there with a parent company so you've got an organization that is an mco then the parent company offers a dsnip those plans are affiliated then a member in an affiliated dsnip is considered to have an, uh, an aligned enrollment so why do we care if it's aligned well because in the future enrollments in dsnips i wrote maybe but i think they will be enrollment in dsnips dsnips will be limited to aligned enrollments only so in other words, if you want to, in the future, I think by 2027, if you want to enroll a dual, they're probably going to only be able to enroll in duals that are aligned. So a dual plan that is an organization offering a dual that has another company that is also an MCO. All right, so what's our takeaway or summary about this? Well, the summary is that partial duals and LIS members will only be able to change to original Medicare and a drug plan 
and or change drug plans with an SEP on a monthly basis. That's all they can do. There is no quarterly. They cannot change during the year. Now, though this doesn't change any of the other SEPs. I also got, I'm getting the question from people, what about SPAP, State Pharmaceutical Assistance Programs? As far as I know, the SPAP election will still be available. So like what if somebody has Epic in New York? I think they will still have an SEP. I've seen nothing that says that is being done away with. In the final rule, it says all the other elections are staying the same. So if you've got a partial dual or LAS, the only times you really be able to change them is you can change them for AEP, change them for OEP, or if they have some other election available, like a SPAP election, or maybe they moved, or something standard. Other than that, you won't be able to move them. Full, full duals will be able to change from one Advantage plan to another on a monthly basis if they're changing to an integrated or applicable integrated plan. So a Hyde, FIDE, or AIP dual plan. If there are none of those plans available in a state, then that full dual cannot move using a dual election or a help election, you know, the integrated election as we'll call it. So it's gonna be really important to determine the status of the dual plans in your area. I will mention there are a lot of dual plans that are coordination only. So they're coordination only, or as the company will sometimes say, integrated only. That just simply means they don't fall into the cat, one of the three categories those plans need to fall into. And as a result, full duals will not be able to use that monthly election and enroll in those plans. Right now, there's about 15 states that have almost exclusively all coordinated or integrated only dual plans. There are some states that have none. So in 2025, you could have a scenario where you have a full dual and you will not be able to use a dual election to move them because there won't be any plan that qualifies, any decent plan that qualifies for you to move them into. Just one other thing I wanna hit on that on the states. There's about 15 states that have few to none duals that will qualify, and there's a number of states that have a very limited amount. What you're gonna see, I'm sure, is part of the criteria to fall to get an integrated plan that qualifies using the integrated election, the integrate integration election, is that company needs to have uh, another company. They need to be the parent of an MCO. So you have a lot of carriers that have MCOs in certain states, but they don't have them in others. And these are state, this is state by state. So I think you'll see the carriers do a big push to have MCOs in any given state so they can align those plans and they can meet the criteria so their dual plan will be eligible for full duals to use the integration election and move into it. That's all we have for today. Um, if you have any questions, please give us a call. Our number is 1-800-772-6881. And remember, you can go on our channel uh, and watch all of our videos on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at PFS Insurance. Appreciate everybody coming on today, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the latest news in insurance and agent training. See you in the next video.